Hello, welcome to uh, house construction for the post-apocalypse. Um, after failing four framing inspections, or three, we finally passed the fourth, and uh, sheetrock has been completed, and so this episode is called Sheetrockorama. And right now we're inside Brian's office, and the sheetrock in here is saying, what I'm giving to Brian in here is the illusion of privacy so that I can search the interwebs in peace and pretend that I'm working, when in reality, Abby really knows that what I'm doing is going to the Go Fug Yourself website just to see what those rascally girls think of Paris Hilton's latest outfit. Now we're going into the great room, so I'm going to pan around to the great room. Uh, some of you may remember we were thinking of going with a wooden fireplace just to tempt fate, but we bowed to the DeKalb County regulations and installed a metal firebox. And he says, so anyway, so in here the sheetrock is saying to me, you know what, I'm a little shy, I don't like people much, and so what I'd really like is for you to cover me up with a big honkin' HD set that's going to stretch approximately from wall to wall on this wall just below those high windows, and so that's what we're going to do. And now we're uh, panning around just to see the dining room. And uh, so in here are the windows looking out over into the backyard and the apocalyptic wasteland that used to be my beautiful garden. And uh, right underneath this fixture here is where the dining room table is going to go. And then, pretty boring, it's just the um, rest of the room that is going to contain all the kitchen stuff. They haven't started building the island yet or anything like that. In here, this is probably going to be too dark to come out, a, a lovely pantry. and. Truthfully, there's no point in going into any of the other downstairs rooms because there's no lighting in here yet, and so we have to depend on daylight to, uh, to use the camera. So I'm going to just come around, and there's our front door, and uh, we have the stairs. The stairs are not finished yet because um, they don't want to put in all that beautiful wood while they're still working, and the house is still covered with debris and now again some of you have heard me say the reason that we did this this entire house was this room and this is the library and every beautiful inch of the sheetrock screams out cover me with bookshelves cover me with bookshelves and fill me with books and never let me be empty again and so every square inch of wall that you see in here covered with bookshelves and i may even figure out a way to put bookshelves on the ceiling here. So we're leaving the library. We're just going to take a quick pass through of the guest room and the guest bath because that's pretty boring. So here we are in the guest bedroom. This is where they keep a lot of their supplies. There's a big hole in the wall there. We don't know what it's for yet. Perhaps it's the steam unit for the shower or just something that our builder is, is leaving us with so he can stay in touch with us forever. And uh, here's the guest bathroom, and there's the guest bath. I'd sit down in it and demonstrate it for you, but it's filled with crap. Okay, now we're going directly into the master bedroom. And the most wonderful thing here in the master bedroom that we're now just seeing for the first time is the tray ceiling. So I'm just going to uh, try to back up enough so that you can see the ceiling in its entirety, but uh, it really came out quite nicely. And there you can see the, the special high windows in there. And then panning over the beautiful view out the backyard. And I don't know if, again, if there'll be enough light to see it, but this huge honking room, and I actually don't think there's enough light to see it, is um, Brian's closet. And just so you know, this this closet is, is bigger than every closet in our old house put together, and including the horrible house. And now we're going into the master bath. And so here we have the uh, enclosure for the garden tub with the picture window. Um, and uh, the little toilet niche, which is always fascinating. And uh, there's the uh, unit where there's gonna be the steam shower and a tiled bench and all that, very decadent. And then the entrance to my closet, which again, not much point in going in there because it's uh, not enough light just yet. 
So uh, we're gonna go out the back and uh, show you a little bit of what the deck and the front porch columns look like, and then I will conclude this fascinating episode of Sheet rock -arama. Okay, we're here at the front of the house, and I just wanted to uh, show you guys the front porch because it's really shaping up. We had sent them a, um, a picture of a craftsman-style house, and so as you can see, it's really shaping up. The, the columns are exactly as we wanted them to be. It really looks nice um, with the roof line of the porch and so on. Um, and here's what the rest of the front yard looks like. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm really kind of liking the urban grittiness of um, all the debris in the front yard. And so there's a good chance I, I may ask Bernie to leave some of this here, you know, just to give us that like city living look that you just can't get outside the perimeter. Okay, so this is going to be the concluding portion of uh, Sheet rock -arama. Um, this is the beginnings of the back deck. We uh, chose Trex decking because of its lower maintenance costs. So uh, hopefully um, the semi-artificial nature of the Trex decking will start to look uh, a little bit more weathered as time goes by um, and not so fakey. But it's going to be a nice sized deck and we're getting a gas line put out there so that we can put the grill on it. And um, that's about it. There's the, uh, there's the back door to the deck. And uh, thank you for joining me on Sheet Rockorama.